I'm just waiting for the webinar to go live here. So bear with me. All right. Good evening, everyone. I am Mayor Jen Wallison, and welcome to the Menlo Park City Council December 12th special and regular City Council meeting. This is a hybrid meeting with City Council, City staff, and members of the public participating in City Council chambers. I would first like to introduce City Council members and staff present. We have Vice Mayor Cecilia Taylor, City Council members Drew Combs, Maria Dorr, and Betsy Nash. And our staff present tonight include our City Manager, Justin Murphy, our Assistant City Manager, Stephen Stolte, and our City Attorney, Nira Doherty. And of course, we have our City Clerk, Judy Heron. City Clerk Heron, can you please provide instructions to the City Council and members of the public on how this meeting will proceed? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. And again, echoing a welcome to our December 12th City Council meeting. For members of the public who wish to provide comment on an item on tonight's agenda, after the mayor calls for public comment on that item, if you are participating in person, ask that you complete a speaker card at back table, return to me, at the clerk's desk. If you are participating virtually, you can engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in from a landline or cell phone, you can press star nine at that time. Mayor Willison, that concludes my instructions. You may continue. Thank you, City Clerk Heron. Uh, we will begin with agenda review. Agenda review provides advance notice to members of the public and city staff of any modifications to the agenda order and any requests from city council members under city council member reports. Is there anything anyone would like to pull for agenda review? All right, not seeing any. Then we will move on to public comment. Under public comment, the public may address the city council on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the city council once under public comment for a limit of three minutes. You are not required to provide your name or city of residence, but it is helpful. The city council cannot act on items not listed on the agenda, and therefore the city council cannot respond to non-agenda issues brought up under public comment, other than to provide general information. I will be calling this evening for public comment at the appropriate times for members of the public to address the City Council on the following item agenda sections. Presentations and proclamations, consent calendar, regular business, and informational items. So at this time, City Clerk Karen, can you please call for general public comment? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment for an item not on tonight's agenda, if you are participate, participating in person, please complete a speaker card at that back table and return to me at the clerk's desk. Participating virtually, now's the time to engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine now. We currently have one speaker. So this will be the final call for public comment for items not on tonight's agenda. Okay, so I have one card, Mayor Willison. So I will proceed with that speaker. Um, our one speaker will be Brian Schmidt. Brian Schmidt, and I am the new executive director of Menlo Spark. And I uh, wanted to come down and say hello to you all because it, it's such an important um, relationship that uh, Menlo Spark um, has had, and I hope to continue developing with the city, with the city council, and with city staff. Uh, Menlo Spark is working to assist the city in achieving its goal of climate neutrality by 2030. And that's a, a big challenge. I welcome the opportunity to participate in it. I think you all knew well uh, Diane Bailey, my predecessor, um, who's so active in many parts of the city city's functions. Um, one thing I do want to say is I, I'm particularly impressed with the level of enthusiasm I've seen already here in day seven on the job with uh, on environmental issues by pretty much everyone in the city. So uh, I've been had the opportunity to go back through uh, through YouTube and look at the Environmental Quality Commission meetings for the last seven meetings, I think, and it's been amazing the level of involvement there. I feel like I'm watching uh, executive committee meetings of Menlo Spark. Um, so it's, it's really inspiring to me. I'm hoping to be 
um, significantly involved. And uh, I hope to have the opportunity um, to briefly meet with individual council members and, uh, and meet with staff as well to figure out how Mental Spark can be of assistance in the, the goals moving forward. Uh, one thing I want to point out in particular um, that I know Mental Spark had its, had its uh, involvement with is a four and a half million dollar grant received from the California Energy, Energy Commission for uh, for building electrification for disadvantaged uh, families in Menlo Park. Um, that's such a great um, development that has happened. And I want to do anything I can to assist, uh, particularly our, our Menlo Spark staffer, Angela Evans, in making this happen. Uh, my understanding is there's an expectation for a staff report in January about how the, uh, the city might be working with Peninsula Clean Energy to make this happen. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. And uh, I will be in touch with all of you. So thank you very much. And that does conclude our speakers for item D, public comment. Mayor Willis, and you may continue. Thank you and welcome Mr. Schmidt to your role. Um, and uh, we look forward to our continue um, building relationships with all kinds of community organizations that do great work here in Menlo Park. All right, we are going to be moving on to E, which is our presentations and proclamations. And we have one presentation this evening, which is the mayor's report. Um, this mayor's report is going to be a bit of a state of the city. It's um, not gonna be about me. It's gonna be about everything that we've accomplished as a city this year. Um, so city clerk Karen, can you please uh, see if we have any public comment on item E1? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment on item E1, Mayor's Report, if you are participating in person, please complete a speaker card at that back table, return to me at the clerk's desk. If you are participating virtually, you can engage that hand feature, bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine now. And this will be the final call for public comment on item E1, Mayor's report. Seeing no hands or cards. Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you, City Clerk Heron. All right, so as I mentioned, um, I wanna provide some reflections on the last 12 months and on the year 2023. Um, and this is um, my perspective as mayor, but really, um, about what our city has accomplished, um, what our fabulous council has worked on, what our amazing staff have produced, what our residents have brought forward and advocated for. Um, and so this is really um, a community look at where we've been this last year. And I'm gonna list off a bunch of things. Um, there might be things I forgot on this list um, that doesn't make them any less important. So uh, I tried to make this as comprehensive as possible, but um, I hope I don't end up hurting feelings as I, as I go through all these accomplishments, because there's a lot. Um, so I wanted to first just remember where we were about a year ago. Um, so in January of 2023, when I started off as mayor, um, actually one of the first meetings I led, I had COVID. Um, so that's kind of a reminder of, of how far we've been, um, kind of coming out of that pandemic area and heading into 2023, um, which felt, dare I say, a bit more normal. Um, but then the storms hit, um, and you might remember um, power outages, um, folks confused on how long they were going to be without power. Um, the council declared a state of, or uh, validated the city manager's state of emergency. We had streets that were flooded. Um, the city really came through providing warming centers and hotel rebates to residents, and we kept our residents warm and dry. That was also uh, when we adopted the housing element, um, and we had a special uh, council meeting to appoint our District 5 representative, uh, Council Member Maria Dorr, who feels like she's been with us for much longer. In February, we had a beautiful Black Liberation celebration um, at the Bellhaven Library, in March, we brought back our goal setting workshop that which hadn't happened for a while, um, where the council got to uh, figure out what priorities we wanted to set. And I'm gonna go over those in, in a few minutes. Um, we also had a lot of trees coming down um, and that was a, a big challenge, um, which brought us to April where we had Arbor Day and tree planting. So the timing of that was good given all the trees that came down. Uh, we had our Love Our Earth Festival and our egg hunt in May. 
Um, we were inspired by the UC Berkeley College of Environmental Design students um, who helped us reimagine our downtown parking lots and what affordable housing could look like. We participated in Bike to Wherever Day. We had a joint meeting with the Fire District Board and our IT department successfully transitioned us from .org to .gov. Um, so for all of those of you who think we're blocking you, uh, please make a note that our emails end in .gov still. Um, in June, uh, we kicked off our summer concert series um, and we had our Juneteenth celebration. We also adopted our budget and um, kind of learned about the structural deficit challenge that we are continuing to face and that we'll be facing in the near future. In July, we had a beautiful downtown 4th of July celebration. Um, we passed a safe, a safe storage of firearms resolution, and we uh, put up a Builder's Remedy FAQ on our website. Um, in August, we adopted an updated community amenities list. September, we had our first Public Works open house. Um, in October, I welcomed our sister city, Galway Mayor Eddie Hoare, to Menlo Park, and we had our beautiful Halloween hoop mark. November saw a United Against Hate and Ruby Bridges Walk to School um, proclamations. And in December, we just had our tree lighting um, with a menorah this year. And uh, just last week, I got to host some first graders from Oak Knoll here in city council chambers um, to teach them uh, what the city council does. Um, so it's been quite a full year. Um, and now I want to reflect briefly on those top priorities that I mentioned we established in March. So um, if I asked you what you thought the top five priorities of the council were, I wonder if anyone would get them right. We should have done a, a, a polling to see if it, people would get it right. Um, but as a refresher, they were climate action, housing, safe streets, activating downtown and economic development, and emergency preparedness. And boy, we this was a, a very productive year. On climate work, as Mr. Schmidt said, uh, we worked out an agreement with Peninsula Clean Energy, or we decided to work with Peninsula Clean Energy to use the uh, at least half of the 4.5 million towards electrifying uh, existing homes in Bellhaven. We recently um, updated our permitting to make it easier for heat pumps and other electrical um, electric equipment to be installed in garages and in easements. We continue to electrify city buildings and equipment and our fleet. We adopted a zero emission landscape um, rule as also known as a gas leaf blower ban that I know a lot of residents are excited about, which is gonna go into effect summer 2024. And we have a rebate program for folks starting in uh, early next year. We joined Peninsula Clean Energy's solar for public buildings program to add solar to four city buildings. And we partnered with PG&E's EV fleet program to expand, to expand EV charging at City Hall. We received a solar APP plus grant to streamline solar permitting. And we expanded the sustainability team with an additional staff person focused on climate change. So um, for all of you who work on climate or care about climate, I hope you feel that we um, did our part. Of course, we all know that the climate emergency um, needs even more work, um, but, but we did do a lot. Um, housing, wow. So um, you might've heard of something called the housing element. Um, we uh, resubmitted that and then resubmitted that again uh, to the state of California. And hopefully we'll be hearing some good news from uh, them soon on that. We just updated our zoning um, to fulfill our commitments in the housing element. Uh, we saw lots of housing come online at Middle Plaza and Springline. And at Springline, we also got a lot of new um, delicious restaurants. Um, Gateway Rising on Willow Road was completed and that's 140 affordable units. We approved 123 Independence Drive, which has 432 units, including 66 affordable units. Um, we have the SRI Parkline Project EIR underway, which is looking at a lot of units. Uh, we awarded some BMR funding and modified our BMR guidelines to improve the for sale um, process. And we also did updates to our SB9 ordinance. So um, a busy year on housing, and I know we're all looking forward to getting really good news from the state of California. So if, if you're watching HCD, um, we did a lot and we're going to continue to do a lot. Um, so the, the third uh, priority area, uh, safe streets. Um, you might have noticed um, a lot of new uh, treatments on the ground in this area. 
Um, first, we've made progress on Middle Avenue um, with our buffered bike lanes. Um, we also are making progress on advancing the bike ped tunnel to go under the Caltrain tracks. Uh, we added bike lanes on Ravenswood. We um, made it safer to bike on Middlefield. Um, we helped the area um, with a uh, uh, pilot at Menlo and University Ave right outside Dragers because there were a lot of uh, pedi pedestrian collisions there. We also uh, did some pilots at Willow and Alma to make that intersection safer. Um, there's a new pathway going in at Willow Oaks Park, which is really exciting to help kids get through there. Um, we added a bike lane on Santa Cruz Avenue with the help of um, Bistro Vita um, right by uh, Walgreens and Starbucks. Uh, we have been working on the Coleman Ringwood study with uh, help from or with the leadership of San Mateo County. Um, we approved some turn restrictions near Springline to avoid um, negative interactions around that Caltrain um, location. And we also um, are looking to finalize our Vision Zero Action Plan and updating our neighborhood traffic management program. There's also Bellhaven traffic calming implementation um, under construction. And we received grant funding from SMCTA for Willow Road pedestrian and biking improvements, including class four bike lanes on Willow Road from 101 to Bayfront Expressway. So that's been one of the more exciting things for me is seeing um, how many more people I feel like are out biking and enjoying our streets. Um, and it's really wonderful to see the progress in that area. Activating downtown and economic development was our fourth priority. Um, the streeteries program um, was worked on and, and we got that done um, to help our outdoor dining program. Uh, we finally uh, made a decision on our downtown street closure and um, people are really enjoying that uh, plaza area and we look forward to, to more uh, investments in that area in the, in the year ahead. Um, we did a big um, downtown specific plan amendment and did some rezoning to help um, spur uh, development and revitalization downtown. And we hired an interim economic development manager, Grandine, um, to uh, help us with our downtown and all of our businesses. And we're planning for that permanent recruitment in 24. And finally, as we know, the year started with all of those storms. Our, our fifth priority was emergency preparedness. We made progress on our stormwater master plan. We're drilling holes and testing for an emergency water um, capacity. Uh, we budgeted a position for an emergency preparedness coordinator. We um, are about to bring forward our safety and environmental justice elements. We've been coordinating um, on the early side with our neighboring cities and the San Francisco Creek JPA for winter preparedness. I know uh, most of us council members or all of us council members have uh, toured um, the creek recently. Um, and there was FEMA training for all city staff. So I'm really proud of our council, our staff, and everyone for this tremendous uh, piece of work that we um, can reflect on that we've accomplished in 2023. And of course, there were other things going on as well. I, I mentioned that I wouldn't get to everything, but I just want to call out a few. Um, we have seen the rising and, um, and progress on the now called Bellhaven Community Campus um, in District 1. We uh, signed a new five-year aquatics operator contract, so people have stability in our, our swimming pool. Um, we've made progress on our quiet zone implementation. Uh, we have looked into adding pickleball. Uh, we've done work on adding pickleball into our Parks and Rec master plan. Um, we've participated in the San Mateo County. Our staff has San Mateo County Equity and Government um, Community of Practice to Advance Equity efforts in collaboration with other cities and the county. Um, our police uh, joined the pilot, which is the Community Wellness and Crisis Response Team. And one of the most exciting things for me is um, really the management team progress and the, the staffing up of our city. Um, I am excited that uh, we have so many wonderful employees in the city of Menlo Park, and I'm looking forward to a longevity event coming up later this week to appreciate all of our employees. But um, I don't know if we all realize how important uh, city manager Murphy and his management team is and the ability to serve our residents and really accomplish all that we did. So I just want to acknowledge um, some new hires and some promotions in the management department. Um, sitting at the desk here is Steven Stolte, our assistant city manager. Hard to believe he only started in January of this year. 
Um, Brittany Mello, uh, if you want to raise your hand, um, our assistant services director started this year. Azalea Mitch, um, our public works director started this year. Tim Wong, our housing manager, and Charla Freckman, our human resources manager. Um, these are all such exciting um, new hires, and we're so proud to uh, see these new faces. Some big promotions happened this year. Um, Nikki Nagaya became our deputy city manager. Um, Deanna Chow um, became our community development director. Kyle Parada, our assistant community de development director. And Natalia Jones, our library and community services manager. Um, so I just really want to congratulate um, city manager Murphy and the whole management team. And um, it only bodes uh, good things for 2024 and our ability to get even um, more served for our residents. Um, it was also wonderful this year to be able to sign updated union contracts with Ask Me and SEIU. So um, we, you know, we're staffing up. We've got hopefully um, uh, happy employees out there. So only, only good things ahead. And on top of all of this, you know, the lights were kept on, the parks looked great, our classes ran, books were checked out, the community was kept safe, bills were paid. Um, our commissioners um, really worked hard this year grappling with many challenging issues, um, and we really appreciate all of their efforts. And really for our residents and stakeholders, it is so wonderful to see people in council chambers uh, to continue to participate and be engaged in your local government. Um, thank you for being here. It's been a busy year, I, and I hope all of us are proud of all that we've accomplished, and here's to 2024 being even better. So thank you for allowing me that opportunity to reflect. Don't know if anyone wanted, if I forgot anything that you want to add or highlight any of those accomplishments, but wanted to give my colleagues a, an opportunity to say anything if you want to. Yes, Council Member Nash. I just wanted to say thank you so much for that list. It is amazing to hear all of those accomplishments and um, realize that's why we have been feeling so busy <laughs> and um, why residents have been um, really appreciate how involved all the residents have been and um, commissioners and staff, and of course our colleague, council colleagues, um, and good job with all of that. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, um, we are going to move on to our consent calendar. Under the consent calendar, the city council may take action to approve routine business items in one motion, unless a city council member, city staff member, or a member of the public requests that an item be discussed or continued to a later date. City Clerk Heron, can you please call for public comment on the consent calendar? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment on our consent calendar item F1, except City Council meeting minutes, participating in person, please complete a speaker card at that back table and return to me at the clerk's desk. If you are participating virtually, please engage that hand feature at the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine now. This will be the final call for public comment on consent calendar item F1. Seeing no hands or cards, Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you, City Clerk Karen. I am already seeing a motion by Vice Mayor Taylor and a second by Council Member Dorr on the consent calendar. Yes, thank you. So I have a motion on the floor by Vice Mayor Taylor and a second by City Council Member Dorr to approve the consent calendar. Any further city council question or discussion? Seeing none, please proceed with voting. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Wonderful. We are now moving on to G, which is our regular business. Under regular business, the city council considers recommendations from city staff on policy matters or administrative actions that require city council approval. The first regular business item is G1. Adopt a resolution approving the 2024 City Council regular meeting schedule. And here to introduce the item is you, City Clerk Karen. Yes, you will be seeing quite a bit of me this evening. So this first item before the City Council is to a, adopt a resolution approving the 2024 City Council regular meeting schedule. This item was continued from the December 5th City Council meeting in order to include the full City Council. 
According to the city's municipal code, a regular meeting of the city council shall be held on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month, commencing at 6 p.m., unless the city council adopts a different schedule by resolution. Staff has uh, made the proposed meeting schedule for 2024. The proposed dates have taken into consideration city holidays, elections, and school breaks, as well as the inclusion of a summer recess. The city council can approve or modify any of these proposed meeting dates. And that does conclude my introduction at this time. Happy to answer clarifying questions or open it up to public comment. Uh, are there any clarifying questions? Uh, okay, first let's take public comment. Um, city Clerk Karen, can you please call for public comment? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment on regular business item G1, adopt a resolution approving the 2024 City Council regular meeting schedule. If you're participating in person, please complete a speaker card at that back table. Return to me at the clerk's desk. If you are participating virtually, please engage that hand feature bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or cell phone, please press star nine. Final call for public comment on regular business item G1. No hands or cards. Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you, City Clerk Karen. Vice Mayor Taylor. Thank you, Mayor Willison. I just wanna thank the council for bringing this back to give me an opportunity to provide some feedback. I'm very comfortable with the schedule and will be happy to make a motion to approve. Thank you, Vice Mayor Taylor. I have seconded. Thank you. So I have a motion on the floor by Vice Mayor Taylor and a second by Mayor Willison to adopt the resolution approving the 2024 City Council regular meeting schedule. Any further City Council question or discussion? Seeing none, please proceed with voting. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our second regular business item is, this is awkward, G2, recognition of the outgoing mayor. City Clerk Karen, can you please call for public comment on this item? Yes. Thank you, Mayor Willison. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment on item G2, recognition of our outgoing mayor, if you are participating in person, please complete a speaker card, back table, return to me at the clerk's desk. If you're participating virtually, you can engage that hand feature on the bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or cell phone, please press star nine now. I currently have three speakers and this will be the final call for public comment on item G2, recognition of outgoing mayor. Okay, so we currently have five speakers. Last and final call for public comment on item G2, recognition of outgoing mayor. Okay, so we will be having a total of five speakers. Thank you. And our first speaker will be Mitch Slomiat, followed by Pam Jones. Well, Senate and council members, it is wonderful to see all of you in person. Um, I'm a longtime Menlo Park resident. I was on the Environmental Quality Commission for eight years and I'm one of the founders and I'm the current chair of Menlo Spark. So Mayor Wallison, I am just so deeply grateful to you in so many ways for your leadership. And um, apropos to Menlo Spark, of course, your leadership around climate action and all, all of you on the dais, there is so much you've accomplished this year. And, and as you said, of course, there is so much more to be done. And I just really appreciate the commitment and the attention because as we all know, there were just so many priorities the city has to address. And not every city, um, in fact, not many cities do what we do. So hopefully 
the vision that we developed in Menlo Spark and with many volunteers and former council members of um, getting into the leadership and inspiring and collaborating with others, that will hopefully that will continue because it is so important. Some cities have to lead and we're well positioned. So thank you for that leadership. Um, I was um, super impressed just hearing the long list of accomplishments of this council. There are just so many areas that you all have addressed um, in the face of all kinds of challenges. And I'm really grateful to you for that. Um, I'm also grateful to you as a Jewish resident of Menlo Park for the way you have helped us be seen in a period of time that's uniquely difficult in our country with the upwelling of anti-Semitism. And we're not alone in experiencing being marginalized and having hateful things said and, and done towards us. But hearing you make public comments about that really gave me a lot of heart and I appreciate that. And I guess the last thing I'll say is I found myself remembering on the sixth night of Hanukkah that when you were sworn in on city council, there was a lit menorah behind you and because it was all on Zoom. And I so much appreciate all the light you have brought to the city with your leadership. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Pam Jones, followed by Jenny Michelle. Good evening, Pam Jones here. And I wouldn't be myself if I didn't say, I remember when. It has been just really a joy um, watching the work that you have done and your leadership on the council. And particularly when things weren't going as well as we all would have liked for them to, but being able to move through that. Um, and, you know, ex except that this is, this was the council as a whole, and it may not be what you had decided you wanted, that um, always working through that. The meetings were held in such a way that they moved quite along. And sometimes I was looking at, well, I was looking at the, the computer saying, oh my gosh, the meeting's over and it's only 8.30. The meeting's over, it's only nine o'clock. And I was one of those people that when it was in person, I sat here until it was over. And that was at a time when the meetings sometimes lasted until 12, one o'clock in the morning. But um, just the way that you were able to run the meetings was just really, I think it was really important for the council as well. So they weren't fatigued by sitting and sitting and sitting. Um, I also appreciated the newsletters that you sent out regularly. And I often told members of the community, they really needed to sign up for it if they not only wanted to know what was going on, but if they wanted to understand the issues. Because without giving an opinion, you brought the information in. So I'm gonna end with saying, I remember when, and I'm so grateful that I know you and that prior to you getting on the council that we had an opportunity to, to work together on some things. Good work, good job, thank you. Our next speaker will be Jenny Michelle, followed by Adina Levin. Uh, dear Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members, staff, neighbors, members of the public, I'm Jenny Michelle from the Coleman Place Neighborhood Block, D3 resident, City Clerk Judy Heron fan club member. Personal comments, sorry, we had some COVID contacts, so I'm virtual tonight, otherwise I'd be there. Oh my God, true story. I ran into Gilroy Council Member Hilton and it's official game on for 2024. As a transit commuter, the road improvements have been a godsend. Seriously, big virtual high fives, you guys. When uh, Menlo moved to representation by district, I got involved with the boundary, boundary conversations and then got to vote for a candidate. That feeling was indescribable. Direct local representation at a municipality level. I'll never forget that fangirl moment when you, outgoing Mayor Jen Wilson, became our mayor. Although I understand the mayorship is mostly a ceremonial position, you still lead and set the tone. As someone I consider an inspiration as a fellow working mom, working to affirmatively further fair housing and create safe, safe streets, not just for us, but for our kids, and someone on the front line with responsiveness and resiliency, 
greatness in this era of climate collapse, I personally thank you from all of my molecules. You've allowed this space for someone like me to stop hiding in the bathroom cabinet and grow some arms and open the door to learn to provide my own unmet childhood developmental needs. Thank you. You've helped create a space for me to hear music, feel pleasure, and know peace. Those blessings were out of reach for me a few months ago. And those goals I had given up as even attainable in this lifetime. Thank you for helping me live. Our next speaker will be Adina Levin. And our final speaker is Sally Cole. Thank uh, outgoing mayor and city council members. Adina Levin, uh, Menlo Park resident uh, near downtown. Uh, Jenny Michelle, the hard act to follow. I might be a little more staid here, but um, uh, just it, it was really uh, inspiring to hear the recounting of what the city council had chosen its, as its priorities at the beginning of the year, and then what that has turned into as accomplishments um, by the end of the year. Um, as the work of the mayor uh, combined with the full uh, city council moving these things forward, um, including uh, the, the housing element um, and uh, including um, overall uh, addressing the state's goals. It wasn't that long ago that Menlo Park had been a longtime scoff law and not meeting the state housing. And now the city has really uh, moved forward to address those goals of planning for housing for people of all uh, income levels and um, including a, across the city, not only in one district, um, having safe streets as a priority. And personally, I am so much enjoying the uh, infrastructure that's put been put in only in in this year, and also watching other people and how to you know seeing people bicycling up and down middle and seeing people going through our uh, you know down downtown uh, area. The progress continued promise on climate action um, with a focus on uh, equity and working on disaster response, which has an in, um, intersection with environmental justice. So um, just wanted to express that thanks for the mayor and the full city council. And lastly, um, to the uh, previous speaker, jo Pam Jones, on memory lane, I'm pretty sure I remember the very first time that current uh, mayor and outgoing mayor Wallison came to, to these chambers in which I was sitting on the Complete Streets Commission. And as a leader of Parents for Safe Routes, um, came to look at some uh, needs of street safety for children and said, well, here's this long, slow planning process and I want some changes and improvements now. And it took a little while, including participating and, and happy to serve together on the transportation master plan and learning how the process works and you know how to get involved not only as a community member, but as an elected leader and um, you know bearing that out, you know, maybe not things happening as immediately as initially hoped, but really seeing improvements that are out there um, in the world benefiting the community. So thank you. And our final speaker is Sally Cole. Hello, Mayor Wilson. I'm appreciative of the council giving us this opportunity to pause and reflect and, and thank you before you move on after this year you've had. Um, and I wanted to thank you for how tirelessly you work to improve our city. I interacted with you on some safe streets issues and every time we had a discussion, I was always amazed at how well versed you were in every issue and decision we were facing down to the very finest detail and how thoroughly you'd considered everyone's points of view. So I I guess I just wanted to say that at the heart of it all always seemed to me like a really deep caring on your part of the well-being and safety of the Menlo Park residents. And that meant a lot to us who were working on the issues and it was a good North Star. Um, I don't know about the ceremonial role. I always thought you really rolled up your sleeves and, and were very influential and um, I just want to say we're very grateful. Thank you. Okay, and that does conclude our public speakers for item G2. Mayor Willison, you may continue. Ah, 
Um, thank you so much for all those comments. Um, they they really mean a lot, and it's it's nice to be seen, and it's it's nice to see all of you. So I'll say a, a little bit more in just a few moments. But right now, I'm supposed to introduce our vice mayor, Cecilia Taylor. Proclamation honoring Menlo Park Mayor Jen Willison. Whereas Mayor Willison was first elected to the city council in 2020, selected as vice mayor for 2022, and served as mayor in 2023. Whereas Mayor Willison led the city through multiple unprecedented emergencies, including winter storms, flooding, and extended widespread power outages, demonstrating a dedication to providing timely public information, coordinating with and advocating for resources from other agencies and promoting effective emergency response. And whereas Mayor Willison presided over the annual city council priority setting workshop that focused the city organization around five top goals, including housing, activating downtown, climate action, emergency preparedness, and safe streets, and has worked tire tirelessly to further enhance the quality of life for all Menlo Park residents. Whereas Mayor Willison has advanced housing opportunities for all residents, especially through the creation of the housing element and the development of below market rate housing through the approval of BMR housing agreements for the provision of 56 BMR rental apartment units and 18 for sale BMR townhomes in the 123 Independence Drive project. And whereas Mayor Willison engaged with the public to advance constructive and practical solutions, including amending the specific plan to allow street closures on Santa Cruz Avenue and a portion of Ryan Lane and the new streetery outdoor dining program with enhanced public space and bicycle infrastructure improvements. And whereas Mayor Willison continued to build the city's reputation as a leader in climate action through a commitment to electrification community wide through both grant funded programs and zoning updates for existing homes in municipal operations by expanding use of electric vehicles and electrifying operations and by requiring zero emissions landscape equipment. Whereas Mayor Willison has tirelessly championed safe street improvements and supported the development of the city's Vision Zero Action Plan and projects to improve safety for all roadway users on El Camino Real, Middle Avenue, Middle Field Road, and more. And whereas Mayor Willison has elevated the influence and brand of the city of Menlo Park by graciously representing the city to a variety of organizations and groups at community events and hosting students at City Hall to learn about public service. And whereas Mayor Willison continued to impact Menlo Park through serving on the Climate Action Plan number one through five subcommittee, Park Line Development Agreement Negotiations subcommittee, and supported the Library Commission as the City Council liaison. And whereas Mayor Willison amplified her role on the City Council by serving on the Association of Bay Area Governments, League of California Cities, Peninsula Division, Palo Alto Community Fund Advisory Board, San Mateo County Council of Cities, City Selection Committee, Caltrain Modernization Local Policy Group, and Peninsula Traffic Congestion Relief Alliance, also known as Commute.org, further demonstrating her commitment to making streets and sidewalks functional, safe, and comfortable for all users. And whereas Mayor Willison is dedicated to fostering meaningful dialogue and actively encouraging public participation, has exemplified her dedication to Menlo Park by addressing policy issues with insightful, independent analysis, making herself available to residents, focusing on the best outcome for the city of Menlo Park community. And therefore, be it proclaimed that the city of Menlo Park recognizes and honors Jen Willison for her dedication and service to the Menlo Park community. And I just want to say I am very happy that you are still serving after your term as mayor. If I could invite maybe the city council to come down for a photo. After. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Taylor, for those really kind words. Um, it's different getting the proclamation than giving the proclamation. So uh, I'm going to say a, a, a few words um, before I move on from this um, role. Uh, so one year when I became mayor, I reflected on the trying times that the city, the council, the staff, and that the community had endured through the pandemic starting in March 2020. And this was now in December, 2022, a year ago. And it felt like the community feel of Menlo Park that we all treasure was starting to feel alive again. And I went on to say, these were my words, dare I say that as we move towards 2023, that I'm cautiously optimistic that this year, 2023 will be the year that we've all been working so hard towards. And I think as evidenced by the accomplishments that I went over um, that this indeed was the case. And in that statement a year ago, I talked about how Menlo Park operates as a council city manager form of government, not a strong mayor form of government. That is that I as the mayor would have an equal vote, the same legislative powers as the rest of council. And that my job, this is what I said, would be to carry forward the will of the council with dignity and integrity, with the dignity and integrity that the job demands. And I hope you all feel that I was true to my word and that I represented our city well. Being your mayor has been an experience of a lifetime. At times, it was exhausting. There's a lot of invitations that a mayor receives and a lot of email. But something that I noticed as I was mayor, that my presence and or my reply to an email was never really about me. It was about what it meant to have the mayor of a city show up, listen, and be present. I felt that when I was meeting with Oak Knoll first graders, speaking at Chamber of Commerce meetings, or meeting with a group of residents about an issue that was important to them. The act of just being there and listening meant something. One doesn't have to be a mayor to show up and care for others. At the end of the day, the mayor is just another neighbor, yes, someone with some decision-making authority, but really someone who exercises power really by just being present. As I rotate out of this role, I will take this awesome realization with me. I will try to continue to show up when needed, not because of what an event means to me, because of what my presence as someone who strives to be a kind human being may mean to others. I encourage all of us to do the same. Many of us are lonely and may feel like no one cares. So taking a moment to truly be present for another person can really make an impact on someone's day or life. I want to encourage everyone to be kind. And at this time, I want to thank my colleagues, the city commissioners, city staff, all the residents, especially those who's, who elected me from District 3, and all stakeholders for their hard work and engagement over the past year. You all care and for that, I am grateful. I also wanna thank my family who are here tonight, my daughter, Naomi, my husband, Gabe, and my son, Jonah, um, and my friends, those who truly show up for me. When people show up for me, it enables me to help showing up for others and for this wonderful city. It has truly been an honor. Thank you all.
Oh, oh yeah, you could share if you want. You can comment if I, I've meant to do that before. Yes, like if anyone wants to say anything, again, this is super awkward. Please, okay, Council Member Dorr. Sure, I just want to share some words of appreciation myself as it's been my first year on the council. Um, Mayor Wollison, outgoing Mayor Wollison, I've so appreciated how thoughtfully you've prepared before every meeting. You've done your homework. You always did your homework so thoroughly to make sure that us in the dais would have productive meetings, but also so members of the public could understand how local government worked better. And I really appreciate that thoughtfulness you brought. I want to thank you for helping us facilitate productive dialogue on the dais, even when things were tough. And also just want to say how I, I know your heart was in this and thank you for your passion and your commitment this last year. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Holmes. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Willison. Um, just a couple of, of, of comments. I'll, I'll stick with the theme of going down memory lane and remember the time we first met. I think it was Lydia Lee who was trying to get us together and uh, we finally met uh, at Starbucks. Was it maybe seven or eight years ago? Um, it's it's been it's been a while. Um, and I remember after the meeting, um, I think my wife picked me up and she was randomly was was like, "Well, how how did that go?" And I was like, "Well, I know she really likes bikes." <laughs> um, but then I said, and what stuck it stuck in my mind is that she's really concerned about how kids get to school and that they get to school as in the safest way possible. And that uh, we in a community, as a community, aren't doing enough for some of the most vulnerable people in, in our community um, and those we are entrusted with, with caring uh, caring for. And that is also what what stood out in that from from that uh, hour or so at, at, at Starbucks. Um, little did I know at that time that I would spend so much time with you <laughs> in the future. Um, um, uh, but in all of that that time and all of that time we spent together, those things have remained true. One is that you you really do like bikes. Um, and two, that you are always most concerned about the most vulnerable members of our community. And that has, I've, I've never had any doubt about that. That has never been any question. And so um, I thank you for your service. I thank you for um, your commitment to um, those in our community who can't vote um, and who don't know about city council um, and don't know necessarily to advocate for themselves, but how very early on you devoted yourself to this community. Um, so th thank you for that. Uh, thank you for your service to our community. And I look forward to, it's not goodbye, <laughs> to be clear. I look forward to continuing to serve with you um, uh, for the remainder of my term. You don't have to say. <laughs> uh, Council Member Nash. So I too first met you um, in under the... Um, working on complete streets and about um, kids' safety and parents for safe routes. And I just want to remark how um, much that passion has expanded to other areas um, with housing, with climate change, um, and just really how you put so much into every um, everything you do. And I really appreciate it. Um, one thing that I want to call out um, where I've seen a lot of your um, efforts is with the local policymakers group with Caltrain. And um, you've done, you've been such a strong advocate for um, rail and specifically for the city of Menlo Park, um, for safe crossings, for quiet zones, and also for trying to get a region wide <laughs> um, grade crossings. And I really appreciate all of the work you've done. And I'm very pleased that we will still be working together and you'll still be up here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, well, again, I'm truly humbled um, to have uh, had this opportunity and I, I'm not going anywhere. I have another year in my term, um, but the title, poof, is gone. So <laughs> kind of excited about that, to be honest. Um, but it, it's been, it's really been an, uh, a thrill of a lifetime. Um, all right, so we are going to move on.
now to uh, G3, which is the selection of the mayor and vice mayor. Um, City Clerk Heron, can you please call for public comment on this item? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Wilson. I will do a brief uh, introduction on this item before we do public comment. Uh, this item before the City Council is the selection of mayor and vice mayor for the calendar year of 2024. Staff is recommending that the City Council seat a mayor and vice mayor for 2024. The current process for the selection of mayor and vice mayor, the current mayor will turn the meeting over to the city clerk. The city clerk will ask each city council member the name of the city council member they wish to serve as mayor by roll call vote by commonly used first names. The city council receiving the majority of nominations will be appointed as mayor. The same process will be repeated for the appointment of vice mayor, and then the meeting will be turned over to the new mayor. Excuse me, city clerk Karen? Yes. Do you think we could do uh, the paper thing? We can also do ballot voting, yes, and I can okay. display that on the screen. Okay. Um, so uh, sometimes when there's a sensitive topic, we uh, all write down uh, our preference and then it's revealed to the public, but Correct. we don't then, we're not influenced by what anyone else is first saying. So if the, if the council is amendable to that process, um, uh, I believe first we open it up for public yes, comment official anyway. Um, and then of course, anyone can say anything prior to that process if they, if they want, but I, I'll, I apologize for jumping in, but no. Okay. I do. I do appreciate that Thank clarification. You. So just um, to expand on that, um, I will open this item up to uh, public comment. The city council can then have any clarifying questions or discussion about the item. I will hand out our official post-it ballots. Um, collect those and then display on the screen um, the nomination results. And I think that would be it for the process. So with that, I will go ahead and open up public comment for item G3, which is the selection of mayor and vice mayor. So if you are participating in person, please complete a speaker card at that back table. Return to me at the clerk's desk. If you are participating virtually, please engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine now. Okay, so currently have four speakers on item G3. So this will be the final call for public comment on item G3, selection of mayor and vice mayor. Okay, so we have a total of four speakers. We will be complete, uh, concluding with speaker Jenny Michelle. Um, our first speaker will be Maya Perkins, followed by Sally Cole. Perkins, and I am here representing myself as a resident of Bellhaven. Um, thank you, former Mayor Wilson, for your service. Um, it has been a pleasure to get to know you through the years and to see you um, just lead the city in a really brilliant way. Um, I also want to thank Vice Mayor uh, Cecilia Taylor for the work that you've done in this past year, but also just your years of service to this community as a resident of Bellhaven. It has been an absolute pleasure to get to know you and to be in your community and to benefit from your leadership and your council. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you and I appreciate you um, and look forward to more years of your service and leadership of this community and this city. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sally Cole, followed by Ray Mueller. Hi, I just had a short clarifying question, not a comment, um, around the procedure of the mayor selection. I was just looking at the um, procedure that was adopted by the city council, and it says that um, there's a requirement the city council shall elect a mayor and elected member of the city council. And I was just wondering if that as applies as well to the vice mayor or is it just applying to the mayor? It's just not clear in the in the ordinance. That's it. 
point, I'd like to welcome up Ray Mueller, followed by Jenny Michelle. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. So I just came tonight, actually, congratulate you, Jen, uh, on a wonderful year as mayor. I have a, a certificate appreciation from the Board of Supervisors of welcoming you to the former mayor club. <laughs> and thank you. You you led the city through, uh, geez, incredible, incredibly dense, complex topics this year, and you did, did so gracefully. So congratulations to you, uh, Vice Mayor Taylor. It's my assumption you'll be mayor again. And you led the city last time through COVID and to have you back is a blessing to the city. So it's wonderful tonight to see you both, to see the whole council. And I'll leave this with the clerk for you. Okay, and it does look like we had um, an initial hand raised after Jenny. So through the mayor, if I may accept the final speaker as well, thank you. So we will go to Jenny Michelle, followed by Kathleen Daly. Uh, dear Dias staff, Jenny Michelle, D3 resident, uh, personal comments. I was, <clears throat> I apologize, I was assuming that we rotated the mayoral ship. So I prepared my remarks under that incorrect assumption. To incoming Mayor Taylor, woohoo, congratulations. Similarly, finally, District 1 or Bell Haven could have direct representation. I'm so honored that you call our city home and choose to be in public service. The fabric of our city is grown strong by you and your work, both seen and unseen. Since you were mayor in 2020, the entire world, my world, has dramatically changed. What is important to me has fundamentally shifted and I'm taking ownership of the terrible and sometimes amazing legacy my white family has brought upon this world. Thank you for calling me us out. In turn, you can count on me to continue to call out my white people so that we right known historical wrongs and show our kids how it's done. The headwinds are strong, but nothing we can't face together Good news, rut row, those pesky receipts. My extensive PTSD work involves cognitive and behavioral therapy, rut row. I've been documenting beyond reasonable doubt evidence and facts, and I look forward to 2024 with my booklets of receipts for the last 45 years. Hashtag got popcorn, anyone? Crunch, crunch, crunch. Thank you. And our final speaker will be Kathleen Daly. Hi, and thank you for an opportunity to speak, Mayor Willison and former and all the city council members. On behalf of myself, my daughter Zoe Sharkey, and our 15 years in Menlo Park, we are incredibly grateful to this council, um, especially. Mayor Wilson over the last year, Vice Mayor Taylor, um, known you guys for quite a while. It's just been a joy and just really grateful for your service to the city. Thank you again. And once again, it's from Zoe and myself. All right, seeing no further hands or cards. Um, Mayor Wilson, we can return it to the dais for questions or uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you, City Clerk Karen. Um, so actually, I'll follow up with the one question we received in public comment uh, for city staff or our city attorney. Um, there was a question about whether a vice mayor needs to be an elected council member. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we looked through all of the city policies and regulations on the point on the question, there are no procedures or guidelines that specifically require a vice mayor what um, the city adopted council procedure regarding selection of a mayor provides as to mayor. Um, the council is free to Im impose um, or, or utilize those same criteria, but the council has not adopted anything 
limiting the appointment of a vice mayor to an elected um, elected council member who has served for one year. Thank you. Um, are there any other comments, questions uh, before City Clerk Karen um, passes out, I believe some sticky notes. So um, City Clerk Karen, are we beginning then with the vice mayor? Um, what would you like us to do? Uh, we will begin with the mayoral term. So for members of the public, the city council are now receiving uh, little notes and we will write a name down for the mayor who each of us, um, and it will take three votes for that uh, name to be the mayor. All right, so um, City Clerk Karen is going to do some complicated math, and then once she has finished her calculations, she will display the results. Great, thank you for your patience. So the real results are in and it was a unanimous selection for Vice Mayor Taylor to be selected as the mayor of 2024. So City Clerk Karen, does that mean I'm done? <laughs> we, uh, yes, you technically can't turn uh, the saying. meeting over. All right, I'm, I'm out, okay, good luck. Did the city council want to rotate chairs? Okay, so Mayor Taylor, <laughs> through the mayor, I can uh, begin the ballot voting for vice mayor. Yes, please. Okay, so we will do the same process. I will bring around blank ballots. If you can write your name as well on one side and the nomination on the other, holding the nomination name on the inside of the post-it, I will then again display the votes on the screen once those are uh, completely tallied. Give me just one moment. Okay.
Okay, again, thank you for your patience. So with a three, oh, apologies. There we go. Okay. So with three votes, City Council Member Combs will be Vice Mayor for calendar year of 2024. Thank you. Congratulations, Vice Mayor Combs. Congratulations, Council Vice Mayor Combs. Ms. Heron, can you remind me where we are in the agenda? Yes, of course. We are moving on to item G4. And if you'd like, I can just keep on going. It's my item as well. So item uh, G4 is appoint city council representatives and alternatives to various local and regional agencies and as liaisons to members uh, to the city council advisory bodies. Um, this item before the city council um, is where we will, staff is requesting that the city council make those appointments as representatives to the various local and regional agencies, as well as liaisons to advisory bodies. I would like to note that the San Mateo County Council of Cities and City Selection Committee, as well as the San Mateo County Mosquito and Vector Control District do need to be appointed to before January 1st of 2024. I would also like to note that uh, the remainder of these appointments will begin January of 2024. So for any remaining December meetings, the current members should be attending with the exception of the San Mateo County Council of Cities and City Selection Committee meeting, which is on December 15th. And that does conclude my introduction. Happy to answer any clarifying questions or open up to public comment. Let's open it up for public comment. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment on item G4 related to appointments to various local regional agencies, as well as advisory bodies, if you are participating in person, please engage that hand feature bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine. Participating uh, via cell phone or landline, please press star nine. Did I say that many enough times? <laughs> All right, so this will be the final call for public comment on item G3. Not G3, we're on G4. Seeing no hands or cards. Mayor, you may continue. Thank you, City Clerk Heron. Um, and at this time, I just want to direct the council to the letter regarding the mosquito vector abatement. And that came from former mayor council member Carlton. Um, I am definitely supportive of her staying on that committee. Does everybody agree? Okay. And as far as the city select committee and Ms. Heron, remind me, we do not need to vote. We just need to agree. Um, yes, so for all of the appointments we do, I do have a, a slide that we've used in the past to kind of make those. Um, at the end of filling all of these in, we can do one motion to approve the appointees. Okay, that works for me. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. So the, the first two that are on here for a bag, that would be myself and Vice Mayor Combs. The second, the League of California Cities, that would be myself and Vice Mayor Combs. Um, Mayor Taylor, I do apologize. I yes. missed um, the first uh, set of comments. Did we discuss ABAG? Yes. Okay. And we're sticking the primary as mayor and alternate as vice mayor? Yes. Thank you for clarifying. I appreciate that. Um, and same for league. Did I hear that as well? Yes. Okay, great. 
Bear with me just one moment while I fill these in. Okay. And uh, now we're looking at Palo Alto Community Fund Advisory Board. Yes, and I'm comfortable being the primary. In this one, we do not need an alternate, or, or do we? Correct. No alternate is required. That works for me. Does the council agree? Thank you. For the next one, for San Mateo County Council of Cities, the mayor and vice mayor. Is everybody comfortable? Okay. okay. And so for Bosco, we currently have City Council Member Doerr seated through June of uh, 2025. I'm supportive. Great. I would love to continue in the role. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. And so for the remainder of these assignments, um, there's no uh, requirement for mayor or vice mayor. It could be any member of the City Council. Is anyone on the Council interested? I would like to stay on the LPMG if that works for people. I've been the alternate, to, um, but it actually conflicts with the PCE meetings. So if someone else is interested, that would be uh, good. Yeah, tell me what time are the meetings? Uh, it's the fourth Thursday, I'm going to be reading here, of the month. Um, it's not, it's actually not a Brown Act body, I don't believe. Let me check here. Um, so it, it's remote. Um, so one of the nice things of LPMG, it's yeah. typically remote. Okay. Um, yeah, I can be the alternate because it's a night meeting, right? Yeah. The next, um, is the CCAG city county association of Gov governments. Currently I am the primary and my schedule has shifted where I'm no longer available on Thursdays. So if there is anyone else interested in being primary on CCAG? I would be interested in CCAG. Um, if, if Council Member Dorr, were you interested in as well? I'm also interested, but we could also look at how other things yeah. sort out. Um, maybe, maybe put me down for now and then we'll see how it goes. And same. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next one is the Facebook local community, and I believe Councilmember Nash is the current. I would be happy to stay on that. And for that one, I will stay as the alternate. The Grand Boulevard Task Force. Currently, we do not have a representative. I think it's dead. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can. We'll remove that from future as well. Thank you. The next is Hart board member. And currently we have Vice Mayor Combs and Council Member Doerr. I'm happy to continue. Ooh, I'm happy to continue and yeah, or we can we can swap. I mean the meetings are as needed. And so um I'm happy to swap and go on to an U primary. Um and so sounds great. Thank you. The next is home for all. Um currently I am on there, um, and we actually have an upcoming meeting and I am comfortable staying on. The next is Peninsula Clean Energy. I'm interested in staying as the primary. And I'm interested in staying as the alternate. Thank you. The next is Peninsula Traffic Congestion Relief Alliance, commute.org. I'm happy to stay on it unless someone's dying to get involved. Okay. Thank you. The next is the San Francisco Creek Joint Powers Authority. Yeah, I, I um, would like to stay on it. Thank you. And I'm willing to stay as the alternate. And we've already decided for the San Mateo County Mosquito and Vector Control District. Thank you, Kat Carlton, for volunteering to stay on. And real quick on this appointment, um, the SMCMVC does designate the city council to select the term length from 
two years or four years. Historically, Menlo Park has selected the two-year term. So confirming that this would be a two-year appointment through December of 2025. Yes, yes, thank yes. you. The next is the San Mateo Operational Area Emergency Services. Currently, I am primary. Um, since this meeting is on a Thursday, I am no longer available. So is anyone else interested? At what time does it meet on Thursday? Generally, it's 5 p.m. Uh, Councilmember Nash, were you showing interest? Um, I thought it was at 3.30. It's at five. That's it. It's later. City Clerk Aaron, do you have a time? I'm going to ch double check it now. I currently had it pinged at five. We're looking at the San Mateo Operational Area Emergency Services. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, I currently have it pegged at 530 on Thursdays, but I can double check. No, I think you're right. Oh, I okay. I Transposed something. Thank you. Wait, go past um, beauty. Oh, I doesn't. Sorry, I'm I'm picking a lot of Thursdays, but they're all different Thursdays. So I'd be happy to do it, but I'm happy happy if you would like to do it. Why don't you put your name down for now, and then if we need to scramble things, sounds great. I'm happy to be the alternate if you want me to. Oh, this is council member comes if you want to. Okay. Thank you. No. The next is the San Francisco Airport Roundtable. Um, this on this one, I am the primary, and I believe Vice Mayor Combs is the alternate. I would be willing to go as the alternate, um, but I can no longer be primary on this. When's the meeting time? Wednesday nights. Okay, I can. Is is it in person or no? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I I think I can. I can make it work. Thank you. The next is the South Bayside Waste Management, SBW May. Um, currently, I am primary since this is on a Thursday. I could switch to as an alternate, but I can no longer be primary. You, you, depending on what Thursdays it's on. Four Thursday. The fourth. And what time? 2 p.m. and it is, I believe, a you brown can't do it. Yeah, okay. Okay. it conflicts with San Mosquito <laughs> yeah. Creek. I'm happy to serve as alternate or, or for as primary is what we're trying to figure out. Thank you. And the next is the Stanford Community Resource Group. I am interested in staying as the primary. Council Member Dora, are you still interested as being the alternate? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so, so these are now the apologies for the interruption. These are the liaisons to advisory bodies. Thank you. Um, the first one is complete streets. I'm comfortable staying as the liaison. The next is the Environmental Quality Commission. Councilmember Nash. I'm comfortable staying as the liaison. I'm wondering if Councilmember Dorr was. Are you? No, I would be happy to have you still wonderful. serve as that. Thank you. The next is the Finance and Audit Committee. Council I'm happy to still serve. Thank you. The next is the Housing Commission. I'm happy to still serve. Okay. Library Commission. Anybody want it? I'm happy to stay. The next is the Parks and Rec Commission, Vice Mayor Combs. Yeah, I'm happy to stay. And the last is the Planning Commission. I'd love to still stay. And actually, sorry, a quick note about the Waste Management Authority. I didn't realize it meets at 2 p.m. I, I can't make that time on Thursdays. I'd be happy to pick that up. Thank you. The two remaining are outside agency liaisons, which is the Searsville Advisory Group, currently Councilmember Nash. I'd like to stay on that. 
And do you need an alternate? Notice that we don't have one. Honestly, it rarely meets. Um, but okay. why don't, um, perhaps since um, Councilmember Dora and I are for the other Stanford um, assignment, we could do it for this one too. I would love that. Thank you. And the last item is the San Mateo County Flood and Sea Level Rise District, which is one shoreline. I'm comfortable staying as primary. I'd be interested in staying as alternate. City Clerk Heron, did we finish all of the assignments, regional bodies, and advisory bodies? I do believe so. Let me just do a quick little scroll, make sure everything is filled in. Yes, we are all set. So if I can have a motion and a second. I'll move. I'll second. Thank you. So I have a motion on the floor by city council member Willison and a second by city council member Nash to appoint representatives and alternates to various local and regional agencies and liaisons to advisory bodies. Any further city council question or discussion? Seeing none, please proceed with voting. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Heron. The next item on the agenda is G5, appoint city council members to standing and ad hoc subcommittees and disband inactive and ad hoc subcommittees. City Clerk Heron, can you call for a public comment on this item, please? I guess a uh, real quick introduction for this item. Um, this item is to appoint city council members to standing and ad hoc subcommittees and disband inactive or completed ad hoc subcommittees. And with that, I will open this item up to public comment. So this is item G5, appointment of city council members to standing and ad hoc subcommittees and disband inactive ad hoc subcommittees. If you're participating in person, please complete a speaker card at that back table and return to me at the clerk's desk. Participating virtually, please engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or cell phone, please press star nine now. And this will be the final call for public comment on item G5. Seeing no hands or cards, Mayor Taylor, you may continue. Thank you, City Clerk Herring. Bringing it back to the dais, are there any um, comments from City Council members regarding this agenda item? Councilmember Nash. I um, actually would recommend um, disbanding the Climate Action Plan subcommittee for numbers one through five um, because we have so many different permutations. I'm that. absolutely comfortable rolling off that if you, I don't need to be on any. I actually think that um, we've, I've worked with three different council members under this. And so I just think Are that it's proposing should, to get I'm rid proposing of all? to cancel okay. the subcommittee and we continue with Brown Acts as it um, needed. I'm curious if this could also apply for ad hoc uh, com subcommittee for number six, because there are so many components of what adaptation could cons be considered. City Clerk Karen, do we need to make a motion to? We will, disband these. Yeah, we will need to do um, one motion to disband ad hoc subcommittees. Um, so after, I guess, the completion of this discussion, um, as long as there's city council consensus with the disbanded recommendations, I can do a, a one vote for the disbanding. Thank you. Council Member Nash. So I also agree with um, staff's recommendation to um, that the aquatics op operator agreement negotiation subcommittee has completed their work. So that should be disbanded. And then um, the Miller Park Community Campus Subcommittee has completed the work on the Miller Park Community Campus. I would recommend that a Bellhaven Community Campus Subcommittee is um, activated until the building is complete. Um, and I believe we would 
determine the charge next in January. I'm looking to the city manager. Uh, sorry, sorry, council member um, Nash, I probably just need the, the reframing of the beginning of that statement. Um, it, the idea that we would um, regroup a Bellhaven community campus um, subcommittee and discuss the charge um, and I guess the necessity, but the charge in January. Uh, yes. So um, uh, there's a few different options this evening about what uh, actions the council is taking. I think the city clerk just talked about uh, disbanding. So in terms of formation, I would uh, recommend that any um, the council has the opportunity to form subcommittees this evening. Uh, but uh, one thing that we would like to do in January is to take stock of all uh, subcommittee charges purposes. So whether existing subcommittee or newly created ones this evening, that we actually uh, come back with a council action item to confirm the, um, the, the mission charge purpose of any remaining subcommittees. So yes, it could be done in a two-step process of creating the subcommittee this evening and then uh, the follow-up with the charge uh, in January. Does that work for you, Councilman Nash? Yes, unless staff would prefer us to just do it all in January. I think it might depend on the various items that the council is deliberating. I'd say that there's a standing committee, the community funding um, standing committee. I think it's be great to reaffirm that because there's a, there's an actual um, meeting that needs to occur at the beginning of January. So it'd be great to reconfirm that um, any ones for which the council clearly wants to disband, it would be great this evening to, to disband those. If there's any ones for which there's a question, happy to kind of carry those forward. Um, the remaining ad hoc subcommittees could remain until that point in time. So it kind of depends on how the council goes through the list. Councilman Nash, did you have anything else to add or? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other council discussion? Council Member Willison? Yeah, I'd like to stay on the park line subcommittee. I, we haven't actually done anything. So, uh, thanks. Thank you. So I'm, I'm supportive of, of disbanding um, the groups that the staff has recommended. And City Clerk Heron, do we need to be specific in the motion? Um, I do have a motion uh, specifying the five highlighted ad hoc subcommittees to be disbanded, which I can take a motion in a second now if the City Council is in agreement. Yes. Okay, I second. Uh, Council Member Dord, can I take yours as a first? I don't have a first yet. Yes, I thought I thought it was really Mayor Taylor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Fabulous. So I have a motion on the floor by City Council Member Doer and a second by City Council Member Nash to disband inactive City Council ad hoc subcommittees, aquatic operator agreement negotiations, climate action plan subcommittee numbers one through five, climate action plan number six, connect Menlo community amenities and Menlo Park community campus subcommittee. Any further City Council question or discussion? Seeing none, please proceed with voting. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And then I think the next step would be for city council to consider um, appointments to the remaining standing subcommittee, which is related to community grant funding. And then there are still two ad hoc subcommittees, which uh, we could do appointments for this evening as well. Are any council members interested in the standing committees? I'm comfortable if Mayor Taylor and Vice Mayor Combs want to remain on the community grant making subcommittee. I'm comfortable unless someone else wants to do it, but I, I'm fine with, with staying on it. I'm also fine staying on it as well.
Yeah, what's the next one? Oh, uh, well, I'm skipping. The one I did want to stay on was Parkline. Okay. And I was, and I would like to stay on that as well. And council member Nash is recommending a new subcommittee. So I'm looking to staff whether now is the time to recommend it or whether we recommend it in January when we actually discuss the charge. Uh, yes, I think it would be cleaner to um, uh, form new committees in, in, in January as part of uh, re revisiting the charges. Thank you. Are there any other committees? The, are, are the two of you going to stay on the Commonwealth? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Just, thank you. Okay, so just uh, for clarification in the record, um, as displayed on the screen, uh, Community Grant Funding Subcommittee standing, uh, Mayor Taylor and Vice Mayor Combs, and the Commonwealth Redevelopment Agreement Ad Hoc Subcommittee as Mayor Taylor and City Council Member Nash, and the third Parkland Development Agreement Negotiations Ad Hoc Subcommittee as City Council Members Wollison and Doer. Is that all correct? And then um, I know that there is direction to return in January with charges for all of these, as well as the creation of a Bella Haven community campus. Okay, uh, so for the motion, we are just focusing on what is on the screen. So if we can have a first and a second. How second? I've moved. Just one moment. It's showing me, but I didn't touch it. Yeah, anything. I apologize. Okay. Motions. <laughs> okay, so I have a motion on the floor by. I actually Ms. didn't motion or second, but. So I Council Member Nash made the motion and I seconded city clerk. Thank you. <laughs> Give me just one moment to update that. Apologies. All oh, right, so I have a motion on the floor by City Council Member Nash and a second by Mayor Taylor to appoint representatives to City Council Member Standing and Ad Hoc Subcommittees. Any further City Council question or discussion? Seeing none, please proceed with voting. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, City Clerk Heron. Our next agenda item is G6 which is provide direction to the city's voting delegate regarding the regional vacancies for the next city selection committee meeting this Friday, December 15th. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. So uh, again, this item is requesting that the city council select a voting delegate for the December 15th city selection committee meeting. I'm happy to answer any questions or open it up to public comment. City Clerk Karen, let's uh, open it up for public comment. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment on item G6, provide direction to the city's voting delegate regarding regional vacancies for the next City Selection Committee meeting on December 15th. If you are participating in person, please complete a speaker card at that back table and return to me at the clerk's desk. If you are participating virtually, you can engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine now. And this will be the final call for public comment on item G6. Seeing no hands or cards, Mayor Taylor, you may continue. Thank you. Bringing it back to the dais, are, is there any discussion on this item? Yes. I move that you are our voting delegate and have the powers to vote however you'd like. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you.
Okay. A motion on the floor by city council member Willison and a second by vice mayor Combs to select mayor Taylor as the city's voting delegate regarding regional vacancies for the next city selection committee meeting December 15th. Any further city council question or discussion? Seeing none, please proceed with voting. And the motion passes unanimously. And Mayor Taylor, before we move on, I did receive uh, one card for public comment, uh, general public comment item D uh, through the mayor, if we could reopen that portion of the agenda. Yes. Great, thank you. So at this time for any member of the public uh, who wishes to provide comment for an item not on tonight's agenda, we are reopening item D, public comment. If you are participating in person, please complete a speaker card at that back table, return to me at the clerk's desk. If you are participating virtually, please engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine now. Okay, I currently have two speakers. So this is the final call for item D, public comment. Okay, so we have two speakers and our final speaker will be Miko Harris-Parker and our first speaker will be Edward Schlesinger. Good evening, City Council and staff. Uh, thank you for squeezing us in. Um, my name is Edward, and I'm speaking on behalf of the San Mateo County Tobacco Education Coalition. We thank the council and the city staff for working on a smoke-free multi-unit housing ordinance and, and the San Mateo County's tobacco retail ordinance. I'm here tonight to urge you to adopt these ordinances separately. Uh, this is because the two ordinances affect different groups of people, and the process may be smoother if they are discussed separately to allow, to allow everyone to fully participate and share their stories. The San Mateo County Tobacco Retail Ordinance will allow Menlo Park to continue participating in the Tobacco Retail Enforcement Program provided by the County's Environmental Health Services. We urge you to adopt it as written. And as you all know, there's no safe level of secondhand smoke. So we are also preparing recommendations for an ordinance that will protect Menlo Park residents from exposure to secondhand smoke in their homes. We would be happy to present these rec recommendations to you during an educational visit. We urge you to consider these two important ordinances separately. Staff from the county's tobacco prevention program are here if you have any questions. And thank you again for your efforts to make San Mateo County a healthier place to live. Thank you. Okay, and our final speaker, Miko Harris-Parker. Hello, thank you for um, making my public comment. I apologize, I planned on being in person for this evening. I just wanna give a quick thank you to city council and to staff for all of the hard work for this year. Um, I know today was the reorganization and unfortunately I did have to miss it because I was in a meeting. I just wanna acknowledge that while we have had a lot of tension within the city this current uh, year, I look forward to 2024 mm -hmm. and all of you working together to make 2024 a good year for the city of Menlo Park, for all staff and all residents. Thank you um, for your work staff. And I really do hope that we can all bend some fences as it were and have a better year for 2024 for the public, for the staff and for the city in general. Thank you. Okay. Having no further hands or cards, Mayor Taylor, you may continue. Thank you, City Clerk Karen. And our, we are on our next, oh no, we're still on G6. We already voted for G6. We are on information items. Yes. Okay. Um, City Clerk Karen, can we take public comment on the informational items? Of course. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to provide comment on our informational items, H1, City Council Agenda Topics, or H2, Transmittal of City Attorney Billings, please complete a speaker card at that back table and return to me at the clerk's desk. Participating virtually, please engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine now. 
And this will be the final call for public comment on our informational items H1 and H2. Seeing no hands or cards, Mayor Taylor, you may continue. Thank you. Bringing it back to the dais, is there any discussion about the informational items from the City Council? Okay. Moving to H1, uh, City Clerk Karen, can you, oh, we already took public comment on H1. No, we didn't. City Clerk Karen, can you take public comment on the City Council agenda item topics for January 2024? Thank you, Mayor Taylor. We've uh, Completed public comment for H1 and 2. Okay. We can move on to I, City Manager Report. To Excellent. Thank you. Yes. City Manager Murphy. Uh, thank you, Mayor Taylor. Uh, no City Manager Report this evening. Thank you. Bringing it back to the dais, are there any City Council Member Reports? Um, I would just like to mention that we have two openings for advisory. Um, bodies and perhaps um, City Clerk Heron could discuss this. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you for the reminder, City Council Member Nash. So yes, the city count or the city is currently recruiting for one vacancy on the Park and Recreation Commission as well as one vacancy on the Planning Commission. The recruitment is open through December 29, 2023 at 5 p.m. Applications can be obtained on our website at menlopark.gov backslash commissions. You can also pick one up at the city manager's office in city hall, or if you email the city clerk's office, we can send you one via email. We can also mail you one um, if requested. Thank you. Thank you, city clerk Heron. And our last item on the agenda is adjournment. Um, before we do that, I wanted to go through the city council's uh, work before I say my statement. So if you can give me a moment, this will just take a few minutes. Um, just wanted to say that I am honored to serve again as the mayor of Menlo Park. I want to thank our outgoing mayor, which I now can officially call you the former mayor, which you will be forever mayor. Um, thank you for your service to the city, your diligence and your commitment to truly understanding topics that have come before us and consistently connecting with residents and your personalized outreach and most importantly, your newsletter. I also wanna thank the rest of the council, our former Mayor Combs, which is now our Vice Mayor Combs, former Mayor Nash, Council Member Nash, and our future Mayor, Rhea Dorr. I thank you all for your service on the City Council and to the residents of Menlo Park. What Mayor means to me is same that it means to anyone that's the former mayor, and that is it is a ceremonial role for the city and establishes the tone of the meeting. It works with city council members and the city manager to create a realistic agenda, we hope, for the city council. It is also important to ensure certain topics come to policymakers in an adequate time, especially topics that are concerns of not just council members, but also members of the public and staff, mayors, also help to maintain a safe space for all residents in our city to share their concerns, suggestions, and joys with the city council and the public at each meeting. The role of mayor also can provide some cohesion to the city council, the city attorney, the city manager, and our police chief. When we look at our leadership positions, we also include our commissioners and our committee members. Although they are not the governing body that create policy, they do provide input and recommendations and a place for the public to discuss issues and make suggestions. Public service is a place for residents who usually are committed to change, real change, even though most of us are not compensated for our time. We are still happy to serve in our capacity. I'm excited for the upcoming year and I look forward to sharing with all of you what my focuses are in the coming weeks. Again, I thank you all for being here and I thank our council for having faith in my leadership once again. And I thank staff and look forward to the 2024 new year. And after that, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>